Greetings, you malfunctioning sapient computers, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Alathrex. And of course, welcome back to our skeleton of a base, where today we have two brand new goals. The first of which is to finally, and I mean this is in finally, finish off our airship. This will be our main battle vehicle for most likely the entirety of the series, so I think it's about time we at least finish it off in terms of looks. The second goal is to go ahead and level up our Better Future license, because I want to start scratching all of these brand new blocks around this brand new biome. There's whole chunks of scrap out there. I don't really know what they give you, but they do need the better future disc laser in order to harvest them. It's a very specific thing you need, and we simply don't have it. So that's the two things which are our main goal today. Now, normally, the goals would be a bit loftier in the series, but the thing is, I've spent all of today and a good chunk of yesterday trying to fix my computer, which completely broke down. And after getting a professional opinion, and apparently the whole thing is just about to just die on me with multiple components completely and utterly destroyed. So I'm going to be building up a new computer over the next few days and this video really needs to get done because, well, I can't leave you without your TerraTech fix now, can I? And honestly, I just want to play some TerraTech while I still can. Don't worry though, I'll be back probably next week if I do vanish. Hopefully my bodged repairs will last, but that's just a warning, I may suddenly vanish. One like and one comment equals one extra speed building computer. Am I doing YouTube right now? So we're probably going to have about 160,000, maybe a little bit more resource to play with, and that is what we're going to use to try and finish this thing off. So what we need to do straight away is put down one of our SCUs because we're going to be throwing blocks absolutely everywhere. And what I would like is the better future if we have it. There we go, the controller switch. This will allow us to turn off all our shields and everything so we can see what we're doing. So what do we need to do? Ideally, a proper back section. I do want to keep the overall shape. I quite like the, the fact it looks a bit squished rather than a more luxurious looking aircraft. But the problem is we don't have enough lift for that. So what I might do is extend it a little bit. So rather than just having the single big rotor, perhaps have two sets of big rotors. Then we have the back section still. It will extend it by this much, but maybe that won't be too much. I'm just going to mess around with ideas until something looks right. I'll be right back. Already looks a bit weird. I do want to keep the two level design though, so I'm going to have a medium rotor still above and below even the new section. This should be enough lift that even heavy weapons should be okay, plus of course all the Geocorp armor. Now what I need to do as well is make sure that the... Can I throw these away without any problems? What I need to make sure is that the glue-on batteries, which I called glutton last time because dyslexia is fun, need to go in the very centre because these things are insanely heavy. Like, these are a good chunk of our weight, and if they're on the front, where the weapon's going to be as well, that's going to be an issue. So let's have a look at you right now. So let's turn on everything. What's our lift looking like right now? I'll need to keep on checking this. Yep. Right now, far more lift from the back than the front because all the weight's on the front. And we have no stabilizers. So maybe I can get away of actually putting them at the back. If I'm going to have all the weapons at the front. Okay, do weapons first, then we decide where everything else is going. That's what I'm thinking. Hey everyone, as is tradition with this series, Future Lathrix here. So after the last video, I want to say a huge thank you yet again. After mentioning we got 10,000 likes in the first few days, we almost managed to hit 10,000 likes in the first 24 hours, hitting 9,600, which is a new record for this channel, and I can't thank you enough for the continued positivity around this series. So with my computer being a little bit broken at the moment, the series is still going to be quite heavily edited, but a bit less than usual, just because I am finding it more difficult to get footage, but I will be back in my usual rate probably in the next week or two. Don't worry, the videos aren't going anywhere. Now, one thing I do want to say is, I've never had a thousand comments in the first 24 hours before. Wouldn't that be something? Starting to think I may use the bumpers a bit too much. But I also don't care, because I like how they look. So as you can probably tell right now, what we've done is essentially copied the front onto the back. Which is all well and good. I think currently the balance is still pretty much the same problem. Oh, not as bad though. Not as bad. I have put down the, the big old batteries at the back and I have reinstalled one of the gyros. It's probably going to need a few more than that because even with the weapons and everything else, I can't see this ever being fully balanced. I'll try my best, but likely we're going to need to do lots of gyros. 
Once you have some more better future stuff as well, the edge shields look amazing. There's like curved shields you can place more specifically, but those will probably be done in more future builds. Right now, I just wanted to make sure the core here was protected, which it really is now. The very outskirts can still be damaged, like you can just about clip these top jet engines and these back rotors. That's not really a huge concern. They are covered by the repair bubbles. They should be fine 99% of the time. Watch me eat my words there, but I don't want to cover absolutely everything in shields because that's just more and more power drained. SU in the back. Okay, now to balance the front. Currently, it's actually going to lean backwards, I imagine. Yeah, it's actually a little bit back heavy now with both the batteries and the SU there. The SU is very heavy, but we haven't added any weapons yet. So, let's add those and see how that goes. Not done yet, just testing out the balance of this thing. I've brought all of the movement a bit more to the core to protect it. And at the front now, we have this lovely cannon, because it can actually aim a bit. Oh, that's much better. Yes, yeah, so we have a cannon on the front, cannon at the back, which I think just looks significantly cooler. Those things can actually aim. These need to be replaced, though. I thought these could do a full 360. Apparently, they can't, so they can't actually aim forwards at the moment, which isn't really a good thing. So although the cannons can aim, still need to be a fair distance away from the target, but at least now we can actually use them in combat. Lovely. As you can probably tell, I'm having a real tough time controlling this right now. Not yet balanced, but it's looking, in my opinion, really cool. It's almost done now. It took way longer than I expected, but yeah. We have adjustment thrusters all over this thing. We have a grand total of eight of them. A lot of them are just hidden away. So this thing can now strafe very, very slowly. The main purpose is just so the stabilization computer can deal with it. It's very easy to keep a certain height right now, which is lovely. It's actually decently quick, and it turns relatively quickly. It has weapons all over itself this time around, so now it can fire pretty much any direction. And I can always add more weapons if I see fit. Proper shielding, proper repair bubbles. And you know what? I absolutely love how this thing looks. Now I'm going to wait until daytime so we can have a proper test run with this thing. Then we're going to try and do some better future missions. Let's see if I can get that laser up and running. Yeah, super happy with this. This is exactly how I thought it would look in the end, and I'm really happy. The back section still needs a little bit of work, which I'll just be doing over the course of the night. Then I'm... Pretty happy to say I'm done on our very first permanent craft. I'm sure this will annoy some people, but some purposeful asymmetry here. We have the armor plating on side, then having it open like a vent on the other. I think it looks cool. So I forgot to save the hover design from last time, but thankfully this thing was very quick to make. It's just a big bundle of hovers and adjustment thrusters and the sheer desire to win. There we go. Considering that wasn't even timed, it wasn't exactly a huge challenge there. This thing is super fun to fly, though. Look how quickly this thing moves. Super nippy. Ooh, refinery. Cool. Okay, so I'll just be doing all of these missions. So back to heavy editing as we do loads and loads of these things. I think I managed to hit almost every single ring there. But the victory is a victory. Oh, there it is. The most beautiful of all things. Greetings, look at this dapper top hat. Fit for a very smart sir, I saw it. I'm still honored that this is actually in the game. And clearly, the most dapper and fantastic of all the different cosmetics. Obviously now, all designs do need to have this on them somewhere. I'll just leave you as a disembodied head. That's what we get for shooting one of our tiny little lovers. In the background, they're trying to sell stuff as I try and complete this all by myself. Once again, no timer, so it's nice and relaxing. We're getting very little experience per mission, though. What we need is hopefully some of the more combat oriented ones from Better Future soon, because this is going to take ages otherwise. Ooh. 
plasma flamethrower. I'm glad this craft really focuses on drifting because this is some serious deja vu. Just a small combat one, punks. Now what I'm curious to see is if the stabilization computer can deal with us when we're firing our weapons. It tends to not do the best job there. On the upside, we appear to have melted that first enemy. Yeah, we're not moving too far left and right, at least a lot better than it was before, before we were bouncing massively. Now it seems like our aim is just as good as the inbuilt tracking in Terratech. Which, as you can see, can be a problem sometimes. I keep forgetting that my SCU is now attached to my craft. I have been trying to kill this single cab. There we go for so long. Lovely. Ow. Now I know you can just dodge those by moving a bit, but bear in mind normally I'm anchored at the end of these things. It does take a second for this thing to get moving. So I guess we're just going to keep on getting hit on the head every single time we do a mission. The usual, they're trying to sell their stuff, and this isn't a timed one, this is just one of the training ones again. Just need to bounce up and down, basically. It's interesting seeing certain fights happen in the wilds. So you have a missile Hawkeye craft here, versus a Geocorp craft with really basic weapons, but the Geocorp's gonna win. Look at that AI, it completely understands mucking its foe. I will leave such a fearsome combatant. Why do these get spawned so far away? Finally we're here, so these are just the basic ones, these are just the named ones to train you, they give you almost no experience, but are still worth quickly doing. They give you a few items, and a decent chunk of block bucks. On the upside, we are a valued customer. You've got to lift and be held up high, yep, we get it. It must be just looking for certain areas that can flatten like this, that's why it's so far away, but that journey took way too long, even in a decently quick tech. Still, I do need a lot of this stuff, especially things like the Sky Anchors, so I can't complain too much. Oh, we're being timed now! Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, one silly thing about these missions. Go and find the box, but the box is kind of spawning once you enter the area, so you just have to look out for the box flying from the sky. There we go, SCU Online. One day I'll actually remember it's there. One down, or at least spinning out of control violently, one of the two. Ooh, lovely! And number three. Ow. So I think it is this tier where we get the laser we need to start scrapping all the things in the wasteland. I think. Also, can you stop getting so far away if your AI turns off? That'd be great. Ooh, you look really cool. Venture droid. Probably knocked off one of its cabs. Well, there goes that, and there goes little interloper attacking halfway through. If I can shoot through its corpse to get to its head. There we are. Lovely. Hubble, bubble, and trouble. I completely forgot about these missions. Well, that's what we're doing in a second then. First of all, I'm just going to quickly throw this one out of the way. Throw this one out of the way? Get this one out of the way. I'll apparently throw things around angrily. This will give us six parts. Hopefully one of them will be the laser. If not, we'll go off and do this mission. Then return to our base triumphantly. Or am I going the wrong way? No. It's just very, very far away once again. 
This thing really just strikes incredibly well. Okay, one more mission done. And we get... Oh, I think I might actually be it. Is that the what? Fine, then let me look over here. Is it the cyber disk laser you need? At this moment, I realize we have the linear motion machine from Better Future, which means right now my hands are completely off the keyboard. We can just set it on autopilot so we can go nice long distances without having to worry too much. I'm now realizing as we slowly get back to our base, I don't think I have done this mission. I've done the reticule research version. I don't think I've done this one. So I think this might be the Halloween one, which I never actually played the game for, for that update. Actually, as it happens, actually. Actually. And here we are back in our base. So what we're going to do is quickly jump on over to our little craft, go out into the wastes and make ourselves a harvester. And we're going to see just what we can get from all these scrap piles. I know it actually says what the scrap pile gives you if you hover over them, but I've specifically decided not to. Okay, so I forgot to, but either way, it's going to be a mystery to me and hopefully fairly fun. Also, a lot of people were recommending that I put down some fabricators at the end here, so any of the excess simply gets turned into the resource blocks. Honestly, that's a great idea and definitely something I am going to be doing in the future. This is why we need more bridges. Because my driving has a lot to be desired. So I need bigger bridges with safety rails. Hello, scrap pile. Pleasure to meet you. This is my laser. So it gives us... Oh, it gives us components. That makes complete sense. Okay then, what I'm going to build is a small truck with a lot of storage. We are going to scrap this entire section and see just how much we get from one whole wasteland. In fact, maybe that would be the one exception to the rule I have, because at the moment, the rule is simply... Oh look, our thing's killing things. Our rule is simply, we can only get our money from missions and by destroying enemies and then scrapping their body parts, which is a lot more fun than just sitting there forever harvesting areas, in my opinion. But maybe this will be an exception, since I doubt these pop back up, and even if they do, it's just something very different. I don't know. Okay, be right back once I've made a little truck. Make sure it leans down so we can easily harvest everything we can see in front of us. Turns on the spot. Lovely. Just some minor batteries here and there so we can harvest energy from all these steam vents and thus not die if any enemies randomly appear. And then loads of storage on the back and we're pretty much good to go. You know, this may be only designed to harvest all the items around here, but that laser can do a lot of damage. There we go, there we are. Nice and quick. We move nice and quickly, we turn nice and easily. This truck may not look like much, but it's kind of perfect for this job. It also has loads of battery power, so it should be nice and safe for a long time. I am determined to get every single bit of scrap in this yard, and then I'm gonna see if these things respawn. I'm kind of hoping they don't, because then at very minimum, if I, if I need to make money in the future and I'm desperate, I could go to the scrap heap since it'll be nice and far away and it'll be a little mission. But we'll see how things turn out. When I get back and I have a dropper, I can attach a dropper to the back of this thing and then set it so I can just drop all these items at will. We have loads already. Look at that. This is going to be a fortune when we're done. It's going to take a minute, though. After scrapping every last node and double checking to make sure I've got everything, I have just over one full set of the mixed lots of silo. So lots and lots of components here, and really the RNG is heavy. Some of them are worth a fortune, others far, far less. So what we're going to do now is scrap all of these and see how much value we get. Now, of course, the obvious thing we should do is put them all in storage. That's the obvious thing we should do. But I want to see the value of one entire biome's worth of resource. The, the, of course, new biome. 
So I've got the dropper here. We're on normal speed. The scrapper here is on full speed. And we're going to just move everything back. That should go to the dropper. And then that should sell. Oh yeah, I probably should drop these. Otherwise I'm going to pick them up over and over again. There we go. Okay, I'll be back in a second once all of these have sold. Yeah, some of them are worth far less than others. A couple of the scrap chunks just had these, the ones selling for 48 and nothing else. Whereas others, well, they had a lot more, let's say. How much is that one worth I just threw in there? 3,900. Yeah, a couple of them had multiple of those. Wait, is that one of the brains? I think it is, right? Yeah, the seed AI. That's what I call the brains, apparently. How much is that worth? Oh, that's 3,000 as well. Yep, lots of money now arriving. There we go, everything is sold, and that brings us to a total of 104,747 blockbooks. That actually is a little bit less than I was expecting, to be perfectly honest, but I'm happy with that. So really, again, the best thing about all this is we could pop them all into our storage. And as you can see, this craft does not do very well on the roads, constantly getting a little bit stuck here, but it's perfectly suitable to the rough terrain. Twice now I've had to use that to even save it. But with that... I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. I think we've actually done quite a lot here. We've got some more resources, finished off our aircraft, finally built a second permanent tech, since I will be using this over and over again. It can survive a lot of damage and actually deal out a fair chunk of damage just because of the laser. We can add extra weapons to it if we so desire. And we've figured out the mystery that is the Wastelands. So tell me in the comments below if you think I should just continue to harvest the Wastelands or have them more of a one-off type of thing. I'm really curious to see if the things respawn eventually. I'm thinking they won't, but maybe they will. And maybe I should get a plane and go to all the wastelands, collecting all of the parts, and then come back and put them into storage. That would actually be really, really interesting, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So feel free to say what you want, but that's probably what we're going to do anyway. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favorite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. Hopefully next time or the time after, I'll have a computer which doesn't sound like a crying cat. <laughs>